Deepan Shet is with us, uh, Head of Institutional Research at HDFC Securities. Uh, Deepan, hi, good morning. Thanks a lot for joining us in our studios. Uh, uh, it's, it's, the market's been very energy sapping. I think that's what I can feel as a commentator. <laughs> Your thoughts as a participant? So, well, frankly, we are up something like, what, 9 odd percent from uh, the lows of uh, mid-late last year when this crack around NBFC worries and all that happened. I don't think markets have done badly at all. I don't see why market players should be cribbing. I suspect what is happening is that everybody is waiting for that large crack which never came when, when the first uh, signs of going down to 10,000 or so happened. And some of that obviously has to do with the very, very steady SIP inflows. And now Indian institutional investors, or shall I say the Indian retail investor seems to matter more than FPI sentiment. And that's a good thing. Uh, so markets have gotten busy doing to rational investors what they do all the time, proving them wrong. <coughs> so anybody who was saying, look, there's a thesis, there's political turmoil coming up, there's global trade wars, there's Brexit, all this uncertainty, so sell. And what, what, ha what have you? The markets are up 9% from October. Are you buying at current levels? Sir? So it's difficult to justify um, a very bullish outlook if you look at the next six months. But as usual, as has always been in the history of our blighted country, if I may say so. Uh, if you take a six-year future view or a 10 or 15-year future view, there's nothing to get perturbed about. But tell that to the guys who lose 10% in the next six months and they'll curse you. Okay, so it, that, that's the big dilemma that people are playing around with. Something goes wrong and will we see capitulation? Secretly, we are all thinking and hoping for it, but we don't want to say it explicitly. Okay. So I can't th justify... That can be the political binary event. Yes, that's the political binary event, among others. So there are other things which we don't even know are on the cards. What will happen to China? What will happen to the trade war thing? What will happen around Brexit and so on? But we are even... If we are ignorant here, we are completely in the dark yeah. on those matters. So that's the thing. Uh, at these times, what you should be looking at is if you must stay in equities, buy the slow and steady stuff. We've been, we've been bullish on IT and we've refused to reverse our bullish stance on IT despite the huge run-up over last year. We persist with that and we look for value rather than aggressive growth and giving it high multiples. So ITC comes immediately to mind. I'm sounding like a broken record here. No, uh, it doesn't matter so long as it's a slow and steady uh, advice. Yes. Uh, so ITC, you, you're, despite the fall and despite the revenues disappointing, you wouldn't worry? No, not at all. We had a thesis which said that this company has gone through six years of volume degrowth. We got not six, but an estimated seven, seven and a half percent volume growth for the third consecutive quarter now. Three consecutive quarters after six years of volume degrowth. The governance around the industry, and that's a very important factor for sin industries like booze and cigarettes and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so the governance that around the tax structure has improved dramatically. Now you have a stable tax regime. Uh, which, which was at the mercy of, uh, you know, local governments or even the central government. Mm. And it, it, it saw its ups and downs. In fact, it saw the confusion around the GST implementation as well. Yeah. Uh, I, th I think the, the, the cigarette EBIT growth of 9% that you saw, uh, it's important to note that it doesn't have any one-off boost. Mm. People were not impressed with that growth. Mm. Uh, they said that there was probably an insurance claim around the Kerala damages and so on, but none of that is true. Mm. Uh, volume growth was something like seven, seven and a half percent versus our expectation of six percent. Why haven't margins improved as much as we would have wa wanted them to? Or in fact, why have EBIT margins cracked a bit? Well, so those switch cigarettes, those capsule flavored things, uh, are at about eight, nine percent of volumes now. And that is a high cost product. Mm. They are backward integrating into making those capsules domestically now. So that will show through in the next one or two quarters. Mm. FMCG revenues, comparable FMCG revenues are up 14, 15 percent if you take away the declining part of the retail business. Everything is fine. The stock is less than 25x on F20. Yeah. And the market gives it a four percent thumbs down. Mm. You should go out and buy. You should allocate 200 crores from your portfolio <laughs> okay. if you are running a 5,000 crore fund. Okay, that's, that's interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> on ITC. I know, just to extend uh, uh, you know, uh, the argument from ITC, one theme which has you know, sort yes. of uh, been visible uh, and uh, perhaps early days yet uh, is that a lot of consumption companies going for top line growth at the cost of margin. Yes. Uh, you know, the latest being Pedialyte. Uh, so how to approach some of these names? Uh, because most of them are trading at rich valuations. Uh, so the EPS growth perhaps not in sync with the top line growth, but the 
the top line growth is very solid. Yeah, so I take your point there and that's a valid criticism for the strategies of some of these companies. Now, I think it's a little harsh to, uh, to, to, uh, to criticize merely Pidilite for it. I think Pidilite would also have the impact of higher crude prices in its raw material mix and might have suffered a little bit on that count. We don't have them under coverage, so I can't give you a very granular or a detailed or a well-analyzed view. I think the company has a very solid franchise. I do, it's, it's like Mad Magazine, it's number one in a field of one. In, in, in its <laughs> principal category. Uh, so I, I don't think there is much to lose there. Obviously, uh, high valuations in FMCG are something that every fund manager is worrying about. <laughs> but you know, as you move into election season, it is the good old solid boring stuff like FMCG and uh, IT, which is going to give you the hiding places when there is heightened volatility. Mm -hmm. So I can't justify a buy on Lever at these prices. I can't justify a conviction buy on Britannia at these prices. But uh, the stocks don't seem to listen to me. And they keep okay. moving on what and on. What about so this like chemicals? Have you looked at it? I mean, it was suddenly a bomb of a number. Quite bad. I have no, absolutely no, no idea. <laughs> okay. And you may uh, add to uh, the, 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 the embarrassment that I'm presenting here that I'm also a chemical engineer by qualification. <laughs> that, that, that's okay. There are so that's many okay. of those There are lots of not tracked stocks. <laughs> chemical entities yeah. out there. By the way, uh, pull out the intraday graph of uh, Bharti Airtel. And Anuj, I completely take your point and second that. You can say, you can shout from the rooftops and say that we'll start raising prices. It's time to sort of consolidate market share, not to try and grow it. But the question is, is, is your biggest deep-pocketed rival going to uh, play ball? Will it listen or not? And here we're talking about Geo with, of course, the caveats in place and the disclaimers in place uh, with respect to Geo. Um, now, since you're looking at uh, non-consensus trades or, you know, buys in the market, a telecom dog of a sector. Now, Vodafone Idea is coming in, pumping in 25,000 crores of cash. Is there any reason to start looking at these telecom stocks or just completely stay away? So I think the BCG matrix should now create a fifth category outside of a dog, which is uh, just the tail that keeps wagging. Mm. Now, that's the worry people have on telecom. I completely take the point. The sensitivity of cash profits to small changes in tariffs is very high. Okay, but this is a penetrated sector, a very well penetrated sector with very little differentiation across the service mix of different companies. So unless, you know, you, it's dangerous to make this statement, uh, but I will say it, unless they cartelize, they will never get pricing power. <laughs> cartel is cartel of two <laughs> against one. I mean, that's all there is left. Yeah, so even, well, you know, the allegation has been that cement has been running a cartel with dozens of players. So why can't three or four people just put their heads together and say that, okay, okay. we are going to increase prices. Okay. Real prices for telecom services in India are probably the cheapest in the universe. Mm. Uh, I don't see why this should remain so low, but that's how it is. Okay. So we're not looking at telecom. Uh, let's look at other uh, uh, stocks that you have suggested. Uh, Indigo, is that an obvious buy despite or because of the bad results? Uh, the yeah, so here's another different? dog industry and people say it doesn't have pricing power. And, but here, you know, the difference is that the penetration has not yet played out the way it will ultimately play out over a five or 10 year period. Um, I, th I think, so that little bit of a, I think this, the, the yield improvement in Indigo this quarter is significant. It tells me that after taking two quarters of pain or three quarters of pain uh, on, on the yield front in the face of persistently rising crude prices, he, they're finally getting it right on the yield. I don't think structurally airlines will ever have terrific pricing power, okay? Mm -hmm. But... Uh, Somewhere, a player with 50% or so market share, when they begin to kind of tighten the yields a bit and not lose on uh, occupancy or utilization that badly, a tightly run airline, we were thinking they would do a loss this quarter. They did a mild profit. So I think that's very inspiring. And, you know, we are at about 100, 120 kind of, uh, 110 million or something like passengers a year, mm -hmm. uh, tickets sold a year. Why should we not be a 300 million market or a 200, because Our airports are very market? small. So that's going to change. Are change. So, you so should see yesterday. NHA there's no place highways. to put another foot yes, in. Lata. Yeah. So if the NHI could build highways, I think uh, the government will also figure out a way to add to airport capacity. No, I think it, nothing in India moves in a straight line. We always go two steps forward, one step back. Sometimes two steps back and one okay. step forward. Yeah, so Indigo taken. That's a debate yeah. for another yeah. day, of course. Right now we're catering to a market which is trading. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, cement. Uh, we had Shea Cement's numbers. Uh, the market positioning is very short on cement. Uh, it's been a sector which has done nothing for the last many years now. But, 
Uh, do you see that changing or...? That's not true. People have made very serious money on cement over the last four or five. In fact, across the Modi era, if I can call it no, that, no, let's call last... it the Modi era one. You know, uh, Deepin, In, the, the beauty yeah. is, you know, we can look at the <laughs> level from where, you know, we want to see. Yeah, so I we mean, can change you know, the goalposts. Uh, you, you, you know, I could look at 10 years back and say that, uh, you know, uh, 20 years back and say that lever has, uh, had done nothing for, for a period of time. The point I'm trying to make is the, in the absolute near term over the last six months of one year, I mean, I, I know 2014 onwards, a lot of stocks made a lot of money. That's not what I'm discussing right now. Uh, so the way to value a cement company is to give it a fair EV per ton. Uh, there are people at $60 and there are people at $200 or thereabouts. How do you decide how much to give to which one? I think it's a function of just three things, three variables. And that is, can you persistently uh, deliver best in line operating costs? Can you persistently deliver uh, the lowest uh, investment or, or, or spend in terms of capex per ton that you put up? And three, do you have pricing power? Mm -hmm. And there are very few companies who, which actually add all these things together and are able to consistently post cash profits and either give them back to shareholders or reinvest them in the business for addressing a larger and larger, you know, addressable capacity. Mm -hmm. So a, a, a fairy tale story like Shri Cement have done, has done it from double digits to what, 17,000 now, if you look at a 20 year span or a 22, 23 year span, I've seen them at a million, million and a half tons capacity and God knows they are close to 50 now. So that and they just compounded at that at something like three and a half crore shares in the equity portfolio in the sure. in the equity share capital, and they've never diluted and they've just kept on compounding continuously over so many years. I don't think there is a single story that comes to mind mm -hmm. which which can match so, that caliber. So obviously they're going through their own issues right now. Uh, they've gone into other geographies. The volume growth looks challenged, and people will criticize them for it and all. But if you look at what they've done over a period of time, that company stands out. Mm -hmm. Ultratech also stands out in that respect. Mm -hmm. No. So, so very few companies have persistently compounded without resorting to external fundraising and, and, and just reinvesting and compounding over a period of time. And they are the ones who deserve premium valuations. We've seen Shri at $60 a ton and now we are happy to give them $200 plus a ton as well. Sure, so, sure. so you get a re-rating and you get a compounding impact over a period of time. So uh, I'm a I Hold that thought. Mm. So the problem with cement is that in the last one year the sentiment is completely cracked. Mm. Because the preceding three years you didn't see expansion in profits, you just saw a re-rating. And the expansion in profitability never happened. So there's disillusionment right now. I would wait for this disillusionment to play out completely. Before we let you go today, I must ask you about a stock that you like, that the market was selling like there's no tomorrow yesterday. ICICI Prudential, you also seem to like SBI Life. So uh, you know, was there something yes. very dramatic in the numbers? And what's happening here? No, so we do think that the, uh, that ICICI Prudential is a good business. Uh, the problem is that it remains. So you saw a growth stumble this quarter, and the problem is that in in terms of so it's a stock business. It's not a flow business, if you know what I mean. You carry a balance sheet. You carry a, a, a sum total, a book of contracts, which yield you profitability in the future. Now the point is, a lot of that stock is ULIP. It's not the fashion for ULIPs. It's disproportionately versus some of the other companies that are listed. It's disproportionately dependent and vulnerable to ULIPs. And especially, so so it's now changing, of course. it's Everybody wants to get more protection in the mix. So I, I, I you know, my view here is that SBI life is, is is a much better proxy if you want to play that change. Okay. And, and look at the distribution franchise, look at the ability to be able to tap uh, the bank branches as well. And of course, uh, arguably the lowest cost base in the country. So right now I would obviously back uh, SBI life over them. They're both very good businesses run by very capable managements. Okay. I don't want to sound less than constructive any of them. Okay. But SBI Life is where the big yeah, money is. We have to leave it at okay. that. Thank you very much, Dipin, for joining us and discussing so many results and stocks. We are results season, so lots of uh, uh, corporates are waiting by.